Well, hello there, friends. Fantastic video today. I just finished making this amazing turkey gravy. You can serve it with chicken. You can do it with anything. It's amazing. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly how to make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful gravy. Hi there, friends. Fantastic show today. I am going to show you how to make a traditional gravy. Well, a kind of a tradition in my house anyway. Uh, <laughs> instead of using the dripping of the turkey, I don't like him. I start from scratch. So last year we made a beautiful gravy. You can find it on YouTube uh, where we used uh, uh, a beef stock uh, and a port wine. So it was more of a dark gravy, which I've been serving in my restaurant and my cooking school for years. But this year... I decided to make a, a more of a, a traditional color, if you will, gravy. Or we're going to use white wine and we're going to use chicken stock instead of using uh, a beef stock. So, real simple, friends. Um, I went to the store and, uh, and I got a turkey because I'm going to do another show that I'm doing this year. Is I'm doing a turkey breast, stuffed turkey breast. So, I bought the whole turkey and I... I deboned the whole thing. Uh, but uh, for you guys at home, you want to make a gravy from scratch, you're going to get yourself a turkey. Inside the turkey, you get what? One neck. <laughs> you don't want to get two necks. You only get one. What are you going to do with one neck? You can't make much of a gravy with one neck. So you know what I do? I go to the grocery store and I buy turkey neck. They think I eat them. You can eat them. <laughs> My mom used to eat them with mashed potato and gravy. Delicious. Ooh, I don't like it. Uh, and don't give it to the dog. The god dog cannot eat those little bones. No good for them, okay? Now, because <laughs> I said that in the first video, we were like, oh, no, no, we're going to kill all our dogs. Don't do that. So uh, buy extra turkey necks. You can get them, I'm telling you. And you can make this gravy way in advance of Thanksgiving. You can make at least a few days before, three, four, five days, keep it in the freezer. You can freeze it for, for next year. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn everything on, my friends. And uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to caramelize some onion and shallots. And we're going to caramelize. And I do it with clarified butter, so I don't need to worry about burning, you see? Now, um, if you don't have clarified butter, be careful. The butter's going to burn, friends. Okay? So you can use clarified butter. You can use a good uh, uh, oil. I like avocado oil. It doesn't burn. Uh, it's got a high smoke point, but use whatever you want. You use vegetables, you use whatever oil you want. What we want to do is we want to get some Maya reaction, some caramelization. And so what I'm going to probably do, I'm going to start doing it, and then we're going to, I'm going to do it off camera, otherwise it'll take a good, this is, to caramelize all this, going to take a good 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes maybe. And, uh, and so I just want to get it going. Let me introduce real quick the ingredient, my friends. So we got turkey necks. I bought some, uh, I got the turkey wings also, but you can buy turkey wings. And I got the gizzard, the, the, the heart and, and the liver in here of the turkey. It's in a bag over there. It doesn't look so good, but it tastes good. Okay, so we're going to put it all in the gravy. Yeah? And I got the extra turkey neck and I got a wing right there, right? And then I got, I got celery, onion, and, and, and carrots. Shallots, I got to chop, chop. I buy those big uh, shallots from uh, Canada. They're beautiful. And, and I got some garlic, and I got some sage, rosemary, and thyme. And, and today I got white wine, because I'm making a, a more of a, 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 a light color gravy and flour. All right? We're going to show you how to do all this. Really simple, my friends. You know, everything I do is very simple. I don't do things. I try it anyway to make it very simple. Uh, instead of using the dripping of the turkey, I don't like it. I don't, don't think that tastes very good. So what we're going to do, we're going to get all this in a pot. We're going to get a caramelization, a good caramelization. Remember, the onion is always first. <laughs> you know, I, I know I'm repeating myself with you guys, but remember, uh, every uh, month we get 30 to 40,000 new subscribers to our channel. We're doing amazing. And those people have never been here before. So I got to explain to them, otherwise they're not going to know. They're not going to know, and they're going to put the onion with everything else, like everybody does. On the internet, everybody got a disease, okay? They put all the thing together, they don't caramelize the onion. If you don't caramelize the onion, they're not sweet. Okay, I'm not saying it anymore for all <laughs> my regular going to say, okay, enough already. Here, here you go. All right, onion right here. Actually, you know what? We're going to saute the onion in here, and, and the shallots, and then we're going to do the other way around. You know what? I, I meant to do this. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks, 
That's a good thing I'm not drinking. A little more clarified butter in here. I meant to do the onion in here. I meant to do the onion in here. I I'm studying, I'm already screwing it up. Ay, ay, ay. Thank, for folks, for all new, new people, don't worry. We still come up with some great food, okay? So rel relax. Don't change channel right away, okay? So here's what we're going to do, friends. Well, let's wait for this uh, butter to be hot. And uh, <laughs> I'm so glad I got my gas stove back. All right, we're going to caramelize the onion. And then, by the way, you know this, friends. I cut everything chopped big because this is going to cook for a few hours, Okay. We're going to cook it for a few hours, so we don't need to cut these small pieces of onion. If you cut small pieces of onion, you know what happened? You, you, you get nothing. You, it, it, they, they disintegrated. Okay? We want some caramelization. We don't need to chop it up fine. That's all I'm saying. The onion first, and then we're going to put the shallots. In the meantime, this pan is hot. We're going to take a turkey necks. You see? And I'm probably going to have to do it in two pieces. In two pieces. Two pieces. To, uh, to shut because you see there's a lot and uh, now you could also take everything put it in a roasting pan and put it in the oven you could do that too that's easy for you too you take a big roasting pan put everything in there and caramel I promise you folks you make this gravy you're never gonna make it again with the dripping of the turkey yeah so here's what we're gonna do friends not to make the video too long I'm gonna continue caramelizing all that when everything is nice and caramelized we're gonna come back we're gonna put it all together I'm gonna show you how I do the, how I do my flour, and uh, and then we'll we'll cook the gravy, and we'll show you the whole thing. So I'm gonna to continue to do that on my own now, so I don't make the video too long, and I'll be right back. All right, friends, we're back. So you notice I got all the um, the, the the wings and the neck and the and the, and the giblet and the. Uh, the heart and uh, and all that are nice and caramelized. I got my onion in there, and uh, and what I did, friend, I um, I added um, uh, shallots, but I waited, I waited for the uh, I waited for the, uh, the the onion to be really caramelized, and then I added the shallots. You don't put them at the same time, okay? So now, a lot of people like to put the flour now and uh, make kind of like a roux. There's nothing wrong with that. You can certainly do that. Uh, but I'm going to show you a trick, and if you watch my channel, you know how to do it. So you can certainly put your your roux now, your flour now, and make a roux, and uh, and sauté the the, the the cook the flour a little bit, and uh, and and that's a, and it's a good way to do it. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'll show you real quick, okay? For those of you that do it or or not so sure what I'm talking about, you go like this, and you put your flour, and then you have the butter in it, and you put in, so you make like a roux, okay? So you can do that and let the flour cook for a little while, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm going to show you an easier technique. Because what happened, let me tell you what I find. I find then, you see, like, if you really look in the bottom of my pot, folks, you see that flour right there, the flour is, is sticking. You know, and, and after uh, two, three hours you cook this, you're going to have some burn bottom. So the way I do it, you don't have to worry about it. Put the garlic in there. Saute the garlic a little bit, and then we're going to deglaze with white wine. You don't want white wine? Don't worry, don't put it in. You don't have to put it in. You know, it, it, why, it, if you don't drink wine, then, then don't worry. You don't put it in. That's all there is to it. Uh, you don't have to replace it. We're going to put stock. We're going to put stock. So you don't have to replace wine um, with, with another liquid besides stock. So now you see we got, got kind of like a glue going on over there. All right. I'll put, put a, little more in there, a little more wine in there. Measure carefully the wine, okay? You don't measure, look, I don't measure nothing, but it's okay because you know, you're, you're looking at it, you go, oh, they don't like there's enough wine in there. <laughs> you drink a little bit too. And um, <laughs> so you have it right there going on, you see? Right there, we're starting to have now. We're gonna add all the rest of the stuff that we have. So let me buy the almost stock so then I can relax and not having to worry about my, my paste or the, this little chicken stock. All right, you can make your own, or of course you can buy a store-bought stock. And uh, so we mix it up, and we're gonna have celery and see Everything is roughly chopped, my friends. Everything is roughly chopped. Carrots. All right, we got the onion already nice caramelized, right? Now the herbs. You can chop them if you want, the herbs. Or you can just do this, you see, don't worry. No, really. <laughs> Put the stem and put it all in there. Everything is going to be strained anyway. So we don't need to worry about nothing. See, that's why I didn't even chop the garlic. Put it all in there like that. You want to put some 
fine one, put it in there. I love a lot of herbs in my gravy. All right, and, and I love sage, so I'm putting extra sage in there, right? So now we're gonna let the wine cook just a little bit. And then, my friends. <laughs> this smells good already. It smells like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday of the year, period. I am thankful to be able to celebrate Thanksgiving. I love it, I am, I, I love it. I, 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 I tell you, every year, every year in my school and in my restaurant was a big celebration. In a cooking school, we started doing two days, three days, and then we would do two weeks of Thanksgiving cooking. Two weeks, every day, different menus. Wonderful. Here we go, my friends, look at this. Put all this in there like this, all our goodies. All that goodies right there, delicious. We're gonna put enough stock to cover the whole thing. Now, like I said, I'm using uh, my chicken stock, so my chicken stock doesn't have any salt. That means that I'm gonna have to put some salt in there, my friends. If you're buying a, a store-bought chicken stock, be careful. Some of them have two, three, four hundred milligrams of sodium per cup, so be careful. It's got a lot of salt in there, okay? But if you're making it yourself, you're not gonna put any salt. You never put salt or pepper in stock. Never salt and pepper in stock. Remember, you don't serve, you don't use stock. You don't drink stock. It's not a chicken soup. Chicken soup, you put salt and pepper. But stick in stock, or any stock, beef stock for that matter, you don't put salt and pepper. Because you wanna keep it for whatever recipe you're making so you can put your salt and pepper in there. Let me tell you, my friends, this right there, it's going to be an amazing gravy. But now, we have to put the flour now. Let me put a little more. You, you make it, fill up the pot. Cover the thing and fill up the pot. You got extra, you save it for Christmas. You got extra, give it to the neighbor. Come on, the neighbors, they, they don't, they, <laughs> neighbors are going to be very happy. My neighbors love me. So I'm telling you. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to put the flour, friends. Put the flour, when do you put the flour? Now, you watch, if you watch my show before, but like I said, we got 30 to 40,000 new subscribers every month, and they probably haven't seen me doing the flower thing, so we're gonna scare them. Here we go, we're gonna put some flour in there, folks. <laughs> no, you don't put it in there. I show you a trick, my friends. For those of you that have never seen the channel, if you've seen it before, you know what I'm doing, right? So, oh, so let me, for good the salt, don't forget the salt and pepper, mamma mia. One day I'm gonna forget my head. So, <laughs> so there we go, salt and pepper. You, we're going to always adjust it later, you know. We will adjust it later, for sure. Uh, for sure. So now, I put a hot stock so then it's quicker. Now what we're going to do, friends, we'll put a st strainer in there, you see? And then we're going to put a little flour in there. Right? And then we're going to take our whisk in there. And we're going to put it in there. And you see, look. Oh, flour's in there now. No lumps. No nothing. You'll never have lumps, my friends. Never, never have lumps. And what happened is, you gotta do that now, though, friends. You gotta thicken your gravy now. Uh, because the flour needs to cook. If flour doesn't cook, it tastes like glue. You don't want your gravy to taste like glue, do you? I don't want my gravy to taste like glue. You see, it's all in there now. You don't know it yet, but I promise you. So here's how we're gonna do that. Whoo, everything is hot. Let me just lower the heat a little bit. All right, so far it's looking good, friends. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's see what we got, okay? Let me make sure I get rid of all that flour in there. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. So what happened is the flour takes a little while, my friend, to thicken, right? So we're not going to do anything quite yet. We're going to wait. Now, you should check out the other uh, gravy video I made also, the... Uh, the darker gravy, the more tomatoey gravy, uh, where I use the beef stock and the port wine. It's more like a, it looks more like a, a dark sauce. It's also fabulous, and I, and I took longer to do it, so I learned to make little shorter videos. <laughs> so look, friends, this we're gonna let it cook. We let it cook for three, four hours, slowly. Bloop, 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 bloop. Very little now, don't go in there, bloop, 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 bloop. And then, then you got stuff all over your stove and you're losing it all and you're burning the bottom. All you need to do is every so often walk around the kitchen, check at the bottom, go with your spoon, fill the bottom. Now don't go in there, fill the bottom. No, really, 
feel the bottom. Make sure nothing's stuck in the bottom. Especially if you put the flour and the roux in the bottom, you better check that bottom. And then when we finish, I'm going to show you how beautiful that is. We're going to finish. We're going to get the right texture. All right, friends? So we'll be back in about three, four hours, however long it's going to take to cook this thing. It smells amazing already. So stay tuned. We're going to show you how to finish it, how to drain everything, how to make it a beautiful gravy. All right? We'll be right back when it's finished cooking. All right, friends. Four, five hours went through. Take your time. You, wanna, you only have two and a half, three hours, then, then that's what it is. But give it some time. Longer you let it cook, more flavor you're going to get. All right? Now, we don't care if the meat is overcooked, friends, because we're not going to eat it. Well, I mean, uh, some people are going to eat it. <laughs> because let me tell you, there ain't nothing wrong with this. You can see the meat is falling apart here, my friends. You see right there? So I'm going to not worry too much about saving any of the juice because uh, when the cameras are off, I'm certainly going to do it. I want to show you the rough things to do it, right? So, so then um, the, 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 the principle of it, you're going to say it's taking a lot of the juice out. I am, but don't worry. <laughs> it's not going to go to waste. I just wanted to show you the principle. Actually, I, you know what I should have done? I should have taken something that had bigger hole. Uh, I still get it a lot, but it's okay. I'm going to use all this. So I just wanted to show you the principle, eh? so then you have it. That's the idea, remove everything, right? We want to remove the big stuff first, and then we're going to strain it. Remember, we got all the herbs in there. We got the whole garlic in there. Now, nothing wrong if you want to leave it in there, but I just think it's more elegant if we have a beautiful, smooth uh, um, gravy, okay? But <clears throat> do it however you want to do it. It's your gravy. You know what you could do? So you can take all this and put it in a colander in your sink, <laughs> and with a big bowl underneath and catch everything. Because if you try to put this through a fine strainer, it's too much stuff to go through the fine strainer. You see, friends? If you try to put all this in a fine strainer, uh, you're going to have too much stuff. It's going to uh, uh, plug. You see, look, look, look at the meat right there. You, you see right there? Well, you can't see it, but it's in there right there. Yeah, this will be amazing food right there, friends. You put it in through the colander, give it 20 minutes, and all of the juice is in there. I just wanted to show you the principle of it. So you take your time to do it more than me. Otherwise, that video is going to be three hours long, <laughs> which it may end up being anyway, right? All right, so then what we do, you see, you'll see, you see in my right, I have a pot ready. But this I'm going to strain, trust me, because this is all goody right there. All right, I'm going to put it through a colander. Right now, I'm going to get rid of this. I just want to finish it quick. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pot. I'm going to put it through a strainer right there, a finer strainer, you see. Put this through the strainer. And what I do when I do that, we turn the heat off. I take one of my ladle, you see, and I go like this. See, I push it. I push it through it. But like I said, this right there, I put it through a colander. And then you see right there, you get most of the stuff. And then you have to clean it every time, because if you don't clean it every time, you do this, then, um, like I say, yeah, put it through a colander. You see? So this pot cooked for a few hours, and if you look at the bottom of it, there's nothing stuck on it. It's not because it didn't stuck. A couple of times we had to, to scrape it to make sure. So be careful when you're cooking it. You want to do it very, very slowly, okay? This gravy, the beautiful thing about it is, friends, you can make this gravy. So like I said, I'm going to take all this right there. I'm going to put it through a colander so I get every bit of it. In the meantime, I'm just going to remove this. I'm going to put the pot right here. So now we have ourselves a gravy. Then we're going to finish, my friends. So let's look at the thickness, okay? The, it's a little thin, you see? It's a little thin, a little thin. And, and at this point, could we put flour? No. The only thing we could do not to thicken it is, uh, is a cooked roux. So if you have a cooked roux, a roux that has already cooked, great. You put it in here, wonderful. Uh, beurre manier, uh, I don't think so because the flour is not cooked. I don't care if it's thickened, it butter, the flour is not cooked. So I don't want to add flour right now. So cornstarch, arrowroot, tapioca powder, all those are great thickener. We're going to do it. We're going to do it right now. I got a little bit of cold starch right there, and I'm going to take a whisk. 
and I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in. Let me get a long, a long whisk, right? I'm going to put a bit of cornstarch then it's diluted in water. So it's half cornstarch, half water. You do the same with, uh, with arrow root, okay? Or tapioca powder, same thing. They're thicker. And uh, so use whichever one you want. You certainly don't have to put cognac in there. <laughs> you don't have to, but, but I do. See, it's my gravy. You're, gonna, you're not going to have it. But if you want to have it in my house, you come over. We'll have a cognac. All right? So look, guys. What we're going to do now, we're going to wait for it to come to boil. We're going to check it for seasoning. Okay? We want to make sure it's got the right amount of salt, the right amount of pepper. And how do we know? It's amazing. I'm telling you, it really is. Let me check it again. Because I was talking and then I forgot to check for salt. <laughs> if you don't think, you don't think, you, you, you don't know. You have to think. Okay, look. You think, is there salt in there? If you can't test the salt, put a little bit more. Remember now, you don't want it to be in the front, you want it to be in the back. Yeah, you want it to be slightly salty in the back, very gently salty, not like, oh God, there's too much salt in there, right? All right, so just a little salt. This is amazing, I'm telling you, this gravy, this gravy is, is amazing. I like my traditional one, the one I make, the dark one, but this is beautiful. We're gonna thicken it a little bit. I want it, look, the idea, my friends, is you want it to be able to coat the back of the spoon. It's really not coating the back of the spoon. It's staying on it for a second, but it's not staying in there. So just think of something. What, what, what's the barometer? The barometer is, would this stick on my turkey? Would, would this stick on my turkey? No, it's too thin. So the only way we have now, we have no choice, is to add a little bit of cornstarch. So how do we do that? We put half cornstarch, half water. We put it in, and we wait for a second and see what happens. Okay, if it's not enough, then you add a little bit more. But remember, it, took a, it could take a minute. You make sure it has to be at the boiling point when you put the cornstarch. Otherwise, you don't know if it's working or not. So you're going to keep adding, adding, and before you know, you got concrete. <laughs> you ever had concrete? Oh, my God, it's too much stuff. What do you do? Hey, that's why I got a pot of stock just in case, ready in the stove, because it happened to me too, okay? <laughs> Anything that happened in your kitchen, it happened to me too, okay? It's... It's not because I've been doing it 50 years that I am free of mistake. You would think so, right? No, not me. Uh-uh. So <laughs> I make them and sometime more than one time. That's what I worry about me, okay? Huh. I mean, one time is okay, right? Two times, you're like, hey, dude, what's, what's going on? All right, a little more constant. <laughs> I know we lost the new people. They're like, hey, this guy's not. <laughs> let's go somewhere else. All right, let's look. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look. You know, I don't want to make it too thick, but like I said, in case I do, so now, don't let that go away. We're going to fix that. Don't touch it over there, Antonio. That's me. Uh, <laughs> Antonio is looking at it. He's going to say, ooh, that's going to be my lunch. No, I'm going to eat that. Let's look at it real quick. One more time, my friends. Oh, yeah, you see? Look, look. You see? Look, look, friends. You see? You see it staying in the back of the spoon much better you see? Much better. And look, look, look. You see the thickness, friends? So at this point, it's up to you. How thick do you want? There's no right or wrong, okay? Again, rare, medium rare, well done. No right or wrong. It's whatever you like. I like it like this. You want it thicker? Make it thicker. One more thing. Piece of advice. You must do it. Just a little bit of butter. I promise you, the whisk. Mix it, turn the heat off. Mix it up right away, only when you're ready to serve. Not if you're making this in advance. Only when you're ready to serve, you put a bit of butter in there. And don't tell anybody. <laughs> They're going to go, oh, your gravy is amazing. This, look, I've been doing this my whole life, okay? And normally, I don't make a light color gravy because I've always made the dark gravy with the dark wine and the port wine and the dark stock, you know, like a beef stock with a tomato thing. And, and, um, and this year, I said, you know, i got to make another gravy, and I'm going to make the, the light color one. And I'm telling you, I am so impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed with my cooking. That's pretty cool. Ah. Uh, <sighs> 
Who? Big, normally wait until it's not so hot, okay? Put it, in, <laughs> put it in a container right there, my friends. Look at this. Look, you see? Make it thicker if you want. Make it thinner. Up to you. And voila, my friends. You have yourself a beautiful gooseneck. Then I messed up kind of like we call when I served it. And, but let me tell you something, my friend. This, we're going to serve it. We're going to make a turkey this year. We're going to make a two kind of turkey recipe. And we're going to serve it with one of those. And it's amazing. I hope you enjoy making it. Remember, give us a thumbs up if you like the recipe. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time with another fantastic show. Thanks for watching. Okay, friends. I just... Uh, Took, just finished cooking this beautiful stuffed turkey breast. And uh, when I took out the gravy uh, to reheat it, uh, it was a little thick. So I just wanted to show you if it's a little thick. Don't be afraid to take your immersion blender. Because what happens when you reheat something that has been thickened with flour or cornstarch, it gets a little uh, thick. So what you do, you take your immersion blender and you make it and see, look. Look how beautiful that is, friends. Look at this. You see right there, friends? Look. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, you see? And, uh, and that's because I, I just made it nice and smooth again. So when you reheat it, don't be afraid to do that, okay? Just in case you need it.